forecast for Thursday, July 18th. Okay, so we have the moon in Sagittarius again here all day. However, today is going to be a little bit busier than yesterday was. And of course, we have a lot more going on involving a lot more planets. As yesterday, we had our second moon day in a row. Of course, that first moon day was in Scorpio energy, definitely unearthed some truths definitely did some shadow work. Then we moved in, had the moon aspects all take place in Sagittarius energy, illuminating a new truth, illuminating a new path, direction, really kind of renewed us in our confidence, in our optimism, in our hopes, in our wishes, in our dreams. Well, today, the moon in Sag still giving us this, let's call it exploration type of energy. We're reframing our reality. We are kind of aligning with a new truth, new path, new understanding, new direction. We we're pushing the boundaries of what it is that we thought we knew, what we thought we wanted. And now we're kind of tapping into a new spirit in our soul space to have us kind of push forward. There are 13 different aspects taking place here today. So again, a relatively busy day in the cosmos. Eight of those aspects are going to involve the moon. The moon in Sag energy going to semi-square Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer himself. He is retrograde in this Aquarius energy. He's illuminating the power struggles going on within us. We're kind of being illuminated to the power struggles going on in the collective as of right now. We need to make a major change, a major transformation in our inner realm. We have to do better. We have to be better. We have to improve. We have to grow. We have to evolve. But this semi-square is creating tension and conflict because emotionally speaking, the moon being in Sag energy has us so futuristically focused that we're missing the whole realm of opportunity in this present moment to deal with with some of the darker topics and themes, the darker thoughts, the darker emotions that are alive and well in our psyche, in our emotional realm right now. And instead, we're not really dealing with the matter of facts, with the truth, if you will. We're searching for the truth. We want a great big goal, great big vision, great big dream to kind of keep us excited and inspired. But we're missing a lot of the finer details that definitely have the ability to put us in a placement of power, put us in a more, let's call it stronger place of authority over our mental plane, over our emotions. This particular friction, this particular conflict is definitely going to have us questioning whether or not we're actually living in Delulu land or whether or not we're actually living in reality. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. A square doesn't feel good. It is a growing pain of sorts. It is highlighting the distance between where it is that we're at and where it is that we desire to be. And again, the moon and Sag, very optimistic, very confident, very hopeful, very wishful for a more positive future. However, Saturn being the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities, willpower and discipline, retrograde in this Pisces energy, we have to deal with life as it is. Yes, it's great to have a goal, a vision, a dream. But if you are not doing the work in your present moment to clean up the debris of the old chapters of the old realm of the old reality and really focusing in on what you need to build and create in this present moment in order to support the goal, the vision, the dream of the future, then there's really no point in wasting any more time, any more energy losing yourself in imaginary land. There is a realistic approach that Saturn needs us to take. Yes, it's great to have that, you know, beautiful dream that you're aiming for, but you have to deal with reality first and foremost. So the pull here is that we want to be hopeful. We want to be wishful about things to come, but the actual truth of the matter is this current reality is a little bit messy. We do have things to clean up. We have doors that we need to close. We have chapters we need to bring to an end before we can start building towards this new goal, this new vision, this new dream. Jupiter, 
the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who rules over the Sag energy that the moon is currently in, Jupiter is in Gemini energy, pushing the boundaries of our thoughts, of our ideas, of our perspective, of our understanding. We are taking a good look at the options, the opportunities that we do have in this present moment to grow, to evolve, to do better in our realm. Jupiter is making a positive interaction with Neptune, who of course is in his place of power in this Pisces energy, but Neptune is also retrograde, meaning we can't run, we can't hide, we have to deal with our physical realms, with our present moment. Now, Jupiter and Neptune working together is a dreamy type of aspect. It is a creative type of energy as well. We do have the ability to tap into some insights, some aha moments, some epiphanies on some solutions to our current issues, to our current problems. Because Jupiter magnifies whatever it is that we're thinking, whatever it is that we're kind of feeling, and because Neptune kind of has us dealing with some, I'm going to call it healing issues, Neptune has us dealing with some matter of fact, some truth, some realities, but also we're being downloaded with new goals, new visions, new dreams, a new calling, a new truth, a new purpose from our higher selves. So this creative energy is definitely putting us in a more powerful position than we have been in recent days to actually see where some of the challenges, some of the circumstances that we're currently dealing with have to happen to make us pivot into a new path, into a new direction. This is definitely going to be more, I'm going to say an opportunity to align with our higher selves, to tap into our intuition, to tap into that spiritual wisdom that right now could definitely help us out and kind of put us in a position to see things differently, to see the greater, grander picture, the greater, grander vision on what it is that we want to build, what it is that we want to create. We have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in Leo energy, making a very positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is in Taurus energy. Venus rules over the Taurus energy that Uranus is currently in. What we're going to get with this particular interaction is a little bit of a shock to the system, a shock to the heart space, realizing what needs to change, realizing what we're excited, what we're passionate about, what we're inspired to actually do, to actually pursue. Now, this is going to open us up, put us in a situation where we're, maybe we're willing to take a risk. Maybe we're kind of spontaneous enough to come forth and be a little bit more forthcoming with our thoughts, with our ideas, with our emotions, with our affections. This has us kind of opening up our mind and heart space to doing things differently. We have to do something different in order to create a different result. The sun shining very brightly in this cancer energy is then going to sextile Uranus. So this is going to be another shock to the system, but in the most positive of ways. This is going to illuminate for us where it is that we're actually making some progress. It may not look like it, may not feel like it, but we actually are. We are nearing the end of cancer season. We are nearing the end of Mars being in Taurus energy. We are kind of closing in on the second full moon in Capricorn before we move into Leo season. So we are making some progress in identifying what needs to stay, what needs to go, what we have to strengthen, what we have to build, what we have to nourish and nurture within ourselves in order to get back to a place of health and wellness, to get back to a place of safety and security. This particular interaction is definitely going to open us up to new ideas. Again, that Uranian energy needs us to adopt a different perspective, needs us to open up our heart and head to doing things differently, needs us to even explore different ideas in order for us to grow, in order for us to evolve. Now, this is a high energy interaction. So we may get excited. We may get inspired. We may be overly optimistic for no real good damn reason. Are we going to question it? No, we're just going to take it as a win. This is going to be an aha moment, an epiphany on how far we've come, what we're doing now for ourselves, how that is making us feel again, hopefully safer, more stable than in the recent of days and just putting us in a situation where we're a lot more flexible. We're a lot more open to thinking about the changes that we could be making, the new ways of going about 
our day-to-day lives that actually might be infusing our physical realms with a new energy. Again, this is a beautiful interaction to have us be downloaded with some creative solutions to some of the problems that we've definitely been illuminated to while cancer season has unfolded. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with the sun. So again, we're just unpacking some aha moments here. Anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there is going to be an aha moment, a light bulb moment on what we need what we want, what we desire. And so again, the moon in Sag energy has us focused on the future, has us kind of, you know, exploring different avenues, different options, different opportunities. The sun, of course, shining a bright light in this cancer energy, showing us the new foundation that we now want to start building again to stabilize our realm, not only in our inner realm of emotion, but also in our physical realm in our physical reality. The moon is then going to trine Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is currently in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the zodiac. So the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. We get this trine because the moon is in a fire sign and Mercury is in a fire sign. We love fire energy. Fire energy helps us burn through the cords, the attachments that we are currently trying to unpack and detach from, especially where the past is concerned. It kind of reignites a fire, a spark, a flame, a passion and excitement that is definitely going to push us into taking new action on some of the ideas that we're feeling good about. And this is a beautiful opportunity to find ourselves in some conversation, some heart to hearts, if you will. But this isn't a sad heart to heart. This is an excited heart to heart. We're sharing our ideas. We're sharing the new wants, needs and desires with the people, with the world around us. The moon is then going to trine Chiron, Chiron being the wounded healer. Also in Aries, energy is a fire on fire interaction, which means that we're feeling good about ourselves. We're feeling the progress. We're feeling the growth. We're feeling our ability to heal from some of the past pain and trauma that has definitely been illuminated to us throughout cancer season. This has us in this new version of self feeling pretty confident, feeling pretty optimistic about what is to come. Definitely some good vibes building here throughout the day. But of course, with all of those good vibes, we do have to expect a little bit of a dip in the energy. This isn't a horrible dip, but it is an awkward one. The moon is then going to interact with Venus. Now we're kind of questioning what we want. Now we're questioning whether or not we have the boldness, the bravery, the courage to actually be straightforward and forthcoming with our thoughts, with our ideas, with our emotions. That's okay. We're not going to sit in it for too long. Mercury is then going to try and Chiron. So again, fire on fire action. This puts us in a beautiful situation for us to see where it is that we're actually learning something. We're putting forth the tough love life lessons, the wisdom that we plucked out of that, the silver linings that we plucked out of that. We're actually learning something. We're actually making progress. This is definitely an opportunity for us to be a little bit more constructive with our communication styles. Again, being a little bit more bold and brave and courageous than we have been in the previous days to be a little bit, again, straightforward and forthcoming with our thoughts, with our ideas, with our emotions. This is a positive energy. We're open to talking a little bit more rationally, logically about some of the sensitive topics and themes that we've been avoiding like the plague. We are definitely a little bit more, let's call it alert on edge in our mental plane. So we're observing things from a different perspective, from a different lens. And we're not as quick to jump in and judge and criticize as we would have been just days gone by. We're a lot more open now to even trying to understand where some of the skewed perceptions, the not so great understandings even came from in the first place. So although it may be a little bit easier to communicate our thoughts, our ideas, our emotions right now, it's not necessarily about let's say getting everything right or being understood in the way that we wish it would. It's more about just getting a lot off of our heart space. Again, Mercury being in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. We have a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings, a lot of observations that we've been keeping to ourselves that now we just want to get out of our body. 
The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction first with Uranus, then with the sun. So, you know, up until the latter part of the day, we've been doing very well here, building in a positive energy, keeping an optimistic outlet, being open-minded, being open-hearted. We have definitely been pushing the boundaries of exploring new truths, new opportunities, new perspectives. But the moon now making a tough interaction with Uranus, now we're starting to confuse ourselves. Now we're starting to question whether or not we're actually living in la la land or actually rooted in reality. A lot of the thoughts, the ideas that we've been percolating on, now we're starting to second guess that. We're starting to even question whether we have the ability to make these changes, to actually align with the path, the goal, the vision, the dream that we're now kind of wanting to pursue. And then the moon interacting with the sun in a not so nice way is definitely going to illuminate the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that we're now having about this potential plan, about these options, about these opportunities. Now, it's not supposed to feel good, likely going to create some confusion, likely going to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer, but we definitely have to learn from those not so nice thoughts and feelings on where these egoic programming seeds are still alive and well within us. We're going to end the day off with the sun in the cancer energy semi-squaring, so not the greatest interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. Again, Jupiter is in Gemini energy, so there is a little bit of division within us here. There's a power struggle going on. We're talking ourselves into one thing and yet talking ourselves out of another. This is a good interaction to see where it is that maybe we bit off a little bit more than we could chew. Maybe we're overestimating our abilities. Maybe we're over-exaggerating our emotional disposition. Maybe we are just, I'm going to say, more optimistic, more confident in our thoughts and our ideas than we're actually feeling. And that's okay too, but we do have to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves and just kind of see where it is that maybe we're just living in this, you know, optimistic, positive la la land in hopes that we are going to actually align with the goal, the vision, the dream that we're trying to conjure up. But realistically, we have to give ourselves a little bit of a reality check here, bring ourselves back down to earth and just ask ourselves, are we rooted in the truth? Are we rooted in reality? Do we have a good understanding of our energy, of our motivations, of our inspirations? And are we kind of talking the talk and walking the walk? Or are we trying to convince ourselves that we're actually doing better than we actually are? <music>